If you've been paying attention to the news recently, there was a disaster known as the Titan sub. International search and rescue efforts are ongoing at this hour in the third day searching for the missing Titan submersible. Well, yesterday, the US Coast Guard revealed that all five people who'd been aboard the submersible had died. Catastrophic implosion. The unthinkable became all too real this past week. This was a submersible, which goal was to go down to the bottom of the ocean to see the Titanic. Now, the Titanic is pretty deep, like a lot deeper than a lot of people realize. And the Titan had gotten there before. On a few occasions, it had failed on others. But on this fateful day, the Titan reached about 8,750 feet before losing contact. Now, for context, the Titanic itself is at roughly 12,500 feet. So it was roughly about 4,000 feet away from the Titanic itself. Now, we've heard this over and over and over again. It's been everywhere in the news recently. But although we can't survive down that far, and obviously a few of our craft uh, have a hard time with it as well, there are animals that survive down there and way deeper than the Titan even got to just all on their own so we're going to go over different animals and some of the incredible things about them that help them survive that deep first on the list we have the black swallower now this is a doozy of a name a lot of these animals have interesting names and they're oftentimes named after either their looks because there's really not much known about them or just one thing they were seen doing. Now, the black swallower is a very small fish, only reaching about 25 centimeters in length or just about 10 inches long. But what this fish lacks in size, it makes up for in its stomach, kind of like me. A lot of these animals in these depths have adapted ways of eating so that when they come across a meal, no matter how big it is, they can get the job done. And the black swallower is no exception. Its stomach can expand monumentally many times the size that you think it would. I mean, it's basically a hefty bag as a stomach. If it can get inside of its mouth, it'll just keep on pushing and pushing and expanding its gut. It can literally eat things twice its size. But unfortunately for this fish, if it eats something that is too big, the digestive juices don't have enough time to actually digest it before the fish that it ate starts decomposing. And what happens when something decomposes? It releases gases. Well, what do gases do? All gases are lighter than water. So when the fish's stomach fills up, sometimes an unfortunate black swallower will float up to the surface and that's it. So eating can be the death of this thing. These guys are known to live between 700 and 2,745 meters or 9,006 feet, roughly about as deep as the Titan was when it unfortunately imploded. Next on our list is the vampire squid. Now, if you're on the internet and like animal videos, there's a good chance you've seen videos of this guy. It's kind of using its looking like ear-like appendages to just float around in the ocean current. Well, these guys actually aren't a squid at all. They look more like an octopus, but they're just like cousins. You know how everything kind of evolves into a crab? It's just a cephalopod that looks like other cephalopods. And it's the last of its group, so all the previous family members it had have been wiped out. It was actually discovered in 1903, back before it was thought that life couldn't survive below 500 meters. And this was one of the first animals to prove scientists wrong now these guys are filter feeders they're about the size of a football they're they're not that big they look big on camera but they're really not and they actually are filter feeders they use these two long tentacles that kind of shoot out into the water and they just feel around for anything that's small enough for them to eat and one of their favorite things to eat is something called marine snow a lot of animals eat marine snow and marine snow is basically anything that is dead or bits and pieces of fish or plankton or just organic bits that are just falling through the water down to the ocean floor. And they pretty much spend their time floating around and eating scraps and trying not to get eaten themselves. Sounds like a great blight. They have been found as deep as 2,500 meters or 8,200 feet. Next on our list, we have our only mammal but this is a pretty special mammal. This is the Cuvier's beaked whale, and it is the deepest diving mammal we know. On one occasion, a Cuvier's beaked whale was tracked to have dove 3,000 meters or 9,816 feet 
This whale also spent 222 minutes underwater. Now, 222 minutes. Think about that for a second. In minutes, it sounds like a lot, but when you put that in context, that is three hours and 42 minutes, almost four hours. That is 20 minutes longer than the runtime of Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Have you ever watched that movie and sat through the whole thing in one go? This whale can spend that amount of time underwater, and they get pretty big too. Some reaching up to 23 feet long, and their favorite foods are squid and octopus. No doubtedly eating the aforementioned vampire squid. And because of the way their jaws are, they actually are believed to eat with like a suction type feeding. Just slurping up squid. Now they don't always dive down that deep, but just the fact that a mammal can even get anywhere close to that when they have to breathe air, absolutely insane. Next on our list is the cookie cutter shark. Now, you've probably heard of this guy. I mean, it gets its name by how it feeds and the bite marks it leaves behind. It literally looks like you got a whole punch of punched out a hole in whatever it is. Whether it be a seal or a whale or a shark, these guys feed indiscriminately. And these guys move a lot. A lot of these deep sea species do a daily migration. These like to live near islands, like Hawaii is a great example. During the day, they spend their time in the depths. But at night, they swim all the way up, almost to the surface, to feed. If you just happen to be a dolphin in the area of Hawaii, these guys are like mosquitoes to you constantly taking chunks out of you though. Just imagine if mosquitoes like took a little circular sized piece of you and just ripped it off. They were eating your flesh instead of sucking your blood. That's what these guys are. They can live in depths of almost 3,400 meters or 11,154 feet. And then at night, they come up to the surface, they feed, and then they go back down as dawn approaches. There have been beached, washed up whales that had died that had thousands of bite marks from these guys on them. Not something I want to run into, although I don't plan on swimming at night off the shores of Hawaii. Now our next stop is the Titanic itself. All these aforementioned animals could reach depths deeper than the Titan was able to reach on its final voyage. But the Titanic of course was the actual destination. It rests on the ocean floor at about 3,800 meters. Like I said, 12,500 feet roughly. But there are animals that survive deeper than even this. The fangtooth is a badass name for a fish. These guys have been found at depths of 5,000 meters or 16,000 feet. They may look kind of scary, but the largest ones are only about 16 centimeters or about 6.3 inches long. That's, that's pretty big. I mean, that's at least average for a fish, right? They also do the migratory and feeding thing. They come up to the surface at night to feed and then go deeper during the day. Their teeth are so long that they have sheaths that the teeth go into that run along their brain. So when their mouths are completely closed, their teeth are literally up into their skull. And these guys are pretty hardy. They've been captured before and brought to aquariums. And even though it's outside of the conditions they normally live, they actually did pretty well. Now we're gonna keep on going back down. Our next stop, at least hypothetically, is Mount Everest. We're going deeper than that. Mount Everest is about 8,848 meters or 29,028 feet. Now this is a pretty big jump from the last one to our animals that live deeper than this. Now we're gonna go down to the deepest fish. This fish can survive deeper than any other fish known and it is called the Mariana snailfish. Now these guys don't look like much. I mean, it practically looks like a tadpole. But these guys are scavengers like a lot of the animals that live on the bottom of the ocean, just eating whatever they can. These guys have been known to live at depths of over 8,000 meters or 26,200 feet. These guys don't even have any scales and they're practically translucent. And there are multiple species and it wouldn't surprise me if something was found even deeper. But there is an animal that lives deeper. It's just not a fish. And speaking of which, January 23rd, 1960, Jacques Picard and Don Walsh went to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, also known as Challenger Deep, in a submarine called the Trieste. The Challenger Deep is 11,000 meters, or 36,000 feet. And you know what they ended up finding down there? Life. Now, the deepest animal they were able to find was called the Hadal 
amphipod. Now the hail zone is basically anything that's in a trench. Like it's so deep that the only places that get deep enough to be called a hail zone are in these trenches like the Mariana Trench. Now amphipods are, they look like shrimp and there's a few different species, but the craziest thing about these amphipods, which are scavengers, they basically just eat anything that falls to the ocean floor. Some of them are big. Some of these guys are like 13 inches long. Can you imagine a shrimp this big down 36,000 feet? Well, that's what's down there. Now to put this into perspective, the pressure down there that deep in Challenger Deep where these amphipods live is roughly 15,750 PSI. That is 15,750 pounds per square inch pushing on you. As a reference, the Titan imploded at anywhere from 5,600 to 6,000 PSI. These animals literally survive pressures over twice that. I don't know about you, but that's pretty badass. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope the families involved in the Titan sub-disaster find closure. That just goes to show nature is an incredible thing. I'll see you on the next one. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this video down below, and keep it wild. See ya.